Welcome back. I'm Alex Hanley from REMAX Preferred Homes. In our current market, temporary interest rate buy-downs, such as the 2-1 buy-downs, are gaining in popularity. This trend is driven by a significant reason. As interest rates have risen, sellers find it challenging to maintain high asking prices, while buyers grapple with the goal of keeping their monthly payments manageable. Temporary rate buy-downs emerge as a solution, addressing both these challenges simultaneously. To shed light on how these buy-downs operate, I've invited Keith Ward from Cornerstone Home Lending to join us in the office to discuss the buy-down process and explain how it proves beneficial for both sellers and buyers. Here's Keith's presentation. At the end, I'll display his contact information, allowing you to reach out for further details. Okay, so I asked Keith, Keith Ward from Cornerstone Home Lending to come in and talk to us today about 2-1 buy-downs. Reason being with the increase in the interest rates, those are becoming more popular. So with that, everybody knows Keith. So uh, <laughs> I'll let Keith come up and uh, talk to us a little bit about buy-downs. Alex, you know me, I'm a technically challenged guy. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. I might have David help. Oh, oh my God. You know, I'm, that's what I figured. <laughs> I didn't want to mess Chad up. What the fuck? Did y'all watch the debate last night? There was. Yeah, of course it was on the back panel. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but Grace I, I won't go. Hey, good job, David. Awesome. Oh, yeah, let's grab some. Let me, let me go ahead and dress. Good job. I feel like I'm coming home. <laughs> uh, no need to do an introduction. We need to have a casino meeting real quick. Right? We might as well. I'm all here. No, we just have to no, let's go. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So, Alex has seen part of this, and it was really cool. And most of the day is really not about me. Honestly, it's about y'all. And how I can help y'all hopefully sell more houses, or anyone. These are just some strategies to put together for your sellers and kind of some words and approaches. So, um... We've been doing this in our Oklahoma office and trying to compete with some of the builder business mm -hmm. um, with our sellers. And it's it's really, really been good. Laurel and I had a client, Julie, who was who was looking at a resale. She loved the house, ended up going with the Perry home, a great agent, got closed, everything on time, but she paid it was about four hundred dollars difference because of all the builder incentives. So mm -hmm. you know, that particular client from my side, had we had a seller who would, who would have been educated on what they might be able to do, you know, potentially could have sold their house. And I don't know if that house is still listed or not. So, yeah. She mm -hmm. mentioned that closing. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and so that's kind of what we're going to go over today. Um, stop me if you got any questions. You guys are and we're done. one of the best. No, I just want to thank everybody for their time. You know, people don't realize how valuable our time is. And just spending a little bit of time so that you can help your sellers. Um, so we kind of defined what the problem was out there, you know, with the, with some of our listings that might be sitting a little bit. And I'm seeing just a ton of price reductions on HAR, two percent, five percent, ten percent, whatever to get those, you know, to try and get those listings moving. Last report I saw, and update me if I'm not right on it, but the, you know, our average inventory was about three months now, compared to two years ago or it was multiple offers and we were going in. So, so this is a, a, a really key thing that we get from, from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, and this is what's called an affordability index. And so I'm gonna look at it from the buyer side and then roll over on the seller side. So you can kind of come back in the 80s is when they started tracking everything, going back in. And what this number here is, is a client making enough money to afford the house that they're in. And so you can look where we were coming back down to 2008, you know, we almost hit our line again and then coming back down to 2023. And so buyers with these higher interest rates can't, technically can't afford the houses. And they're afraid to go out and buy. And we, we see that, hey, I'm gonna wait till rates go down. And we all know that when the rates go down, what's gonna happen? Price, 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 price go is gonna go up again. And we'll multiple offer situations mm -hmm. again. So we're trying to educate the buyers that are coming to our office that now's a really good time to buy. And then we just need to be able to put the strategies together to help them. So, like I said, that's something that I share with all the all the buyers that are over in our office. 
And this is something else that I'll always go because I want to frame what rates are doing. And a lot of people don't look at what rates have done since they started tracking again back in the 80s. And when you really look at it, and they're actually trending down now, we actually are below 7% again, which is good. Really? Yeah, finally. Finally, a high of eight and a quarter. So we're down about a point and a quarter on interest rates. But you can see what happened. And when we go back through these cycles, and the majority of y'all were in the business in 2000. You remember the times and the time frames. Well, man, we were eight and a half to nine percent, and we were still selling without some buy down. So, and I've got this PowerPoint set aside for you guys if y'all want it to. So now we're going back over to our home prices and what home prices have done. So that's what's caused this affordability gap. Those are national numbers, right? Those are national numbers, correct? Texas is a little bit better. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> So the biggest thing is that gap is growing wider. Prices are going up, interest rates are up, people can't afford the house. So you've got a, a, a group of buyers over here who really want to get into a property. You've got your renters, your hourly workers, a little bit of your blue collar that are coming in, and then you've got your homeowners who want to move up and want to liquidate their house and pull into their equity. So that gap keeps on getting wider. And the biggest thing is how do we bridge it? And this is, one of the key things, I don't know if in your CRMs and who you're out there looking for client-wise, the biggest class of home buyers is out there right now, it's your millennials, 30 to 34. And the home ownership percentage is 18%. It's one of the worst that we've ever had in our economy. And a one key statistic, and I'll go over a little bit later, what do you think the average net worth of a renter is? Take a guess. Like 50K? I'd say, I'd say it's 85, 90. Okay. Anybody else got to guess? Nationally, it's $6,000. Net worth of the average renter. Renter is $6,000. $6,000. What do you think the average net worth of a homeowner is in the U.S.? I'm out. I already blew it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it for me when I looked at the numbers too. Wow. 255,000. Yeah, right around. And most of that's in their home. Yeah. I would guess. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's correct. So if we're trying mm -hmm. to set people up for success later on in life, yep. not only just for our benefit <laughs> and commissions and doing mortgage loans, but as a nation, mm -hmm. we've got to move people from being renters to being buyers. They're, somebody's mortgage is getting paid. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what and exactly, if you're paying rent, what's your return on your rent? Zero. Zero. Exactly. And I, I heard somewhere, and I forgot where I heard it from, as far as like an investment standpoint, you know, someone who, who just had a new newborn, mm -hmm. they tell them, hey, go out and buy a rental property. Yes. Hang on to it for 18 years. By what it appreciates in 18 years, bam, you pay for your, your kid's college. Absolutely. <laughs> if not more. Yeah. You, you know, we've had these dramatic numbers, and, and all the numbers in Harris County and surrounding counties are that we're still going to have an appreciation of at least 2.6%. This year, 4.3% next year, and then up to 5% for the next five years. Is that what they're predicting next that's year to double the 4% increase? Absolutely. Wow. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's why when we're going in. So, so, you know, how do we bridge that gap? And a lot of it really is y'all being the real estate professional. You know, educating your sellers um, on what we can go back in and just being the hero at the end of the day. I, you know, I like Indiana Jones, and that's one of my favorite movies, is you've got to look beyond what you see in front of you and just trust and have faith. So, um, buyers can't afford the payment with their debt-to-income ratio numbers. So we can either do temporary buy-downs or permanent buy-downs. And when we go back in, this is us in the middle. We've got to help these people get from one side of the bridge to the other. Or if not, I think our country's going to get an even worse situation in, in trouble. So we got our cash buyers, our first-time home, home buyers, our finance and our move-up buyers. And then what we'll do, again, the gap's going wire, and that's the seller paid buy-downs. And so these are some numbers that I use through Mortgage Coach. I know a lot of y'all have seen that when I send it to your clients. Because what I try and do is run four or five different strategies for them and have them look at it, figure out what's best for them. Not everything's cookie cutter. So what I did here is just take a $500,000 sales price, say, man, we've been on the market for 45 days. Let's lower the price 10 grand, okay? And you can see the difference in the monthly payment, 73 bucks. You think a buyer's gonna really yeah. appreciate that? 
But if we took that same $10,000 and bought the interest rate down roughly about a point on a permanent buy down, they're saving $300 per month. That could be that, that could be a game changer. Remind me to ask you how you market that. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, that, that's the game changer. Yeah. yeah that's how. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's huge. But we, if we have listings, and correct me if I'm wrong, but if we have listings, we're just looking at, okay, traditionally, let's go ahead and just cut the cost. No, let's go back in and see if we can and offer a buy down. Just It's the same thing builders are doing. I right think how to explain it to a buyer. Mm -hmm. Show a buyer that we can do this because you can't really put that in. Right. listing so that's my that's my hang up right and, and, and i've got a okay. couple of solutions okay. on that cool. going through and, and so this is going back in so if we wanted to make that same payment on that exact same scenario your seller would have to reduce the sales price by about forty two thousand mm bucks -hmm. to affect that payment for the buyer to have the exact same payment where we were before as opposed to 10k for real estate 10k exactly so what happens if we, if we can promote that and we can get that out there, the buyer gets their house, we close that wealth gap, it's so important, the buyer gets $41,000 higher priced house for the same exact payment. Um, buyer's payment's $300 lower than what it would have been if we didn't do it the other way, lower fixed rate over time, and saves about $17,000 in five years and $60,000 in 15 years. This is assuming that they're not gonna refinance. Mm -hmm. Just worst case scenario. So your seller is netting more, your commission check's bigger because the sales price is the same. You avoid that price drop, hey, they dropped it $10,000, $10, maybe we can go in another $10,000 under. And then you're, you're, the second thing on the marketing part, and again, you'll have to help me with a little bit of that, is we need to figure out a way and avenue to train or teach the agents that are out there. Mm -hmm. So if, if y'all are the only ones that are out there doing it, then your house in Fairfield can say, hey, we've got special financing available. So these are just some key terms that I've used when I've been talking to some sellers who, who've asked those questions. I think I found the sellers get it. They understand it. It's right. just a matter of the buyer educating agents to educate their buyers. Well, right? how can we legally let people know my seller is yeah, willing know. to, you know, reduce the? Well, you said you can't legally put in a listing, but my prior keeper was just talking about there was a house right down the street that was a resale, mm -hmm. and they did have it in the listing. It's Christina not, Newcomb had it in there. Not, not, I don't to. think specifics, but it. There's so a lot of specifics. Down. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot you can't list in a list in a. Sweet on public remarks, but right. private agent remarks, you can. Right. Oh, it was on But I want my buyer, market. I don't want the agent dictating. I want the buyers to know. They're like, hey, we can get a good deal on, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, I think, I think that's where my disconnect is. Yeah, well, she's got a buyer now that's disconnected that can't see that. That's what I mean. That like, I want how to know how to. Yeah. Well, so, the, the, that, that's where you, with, with your buyers, that are out there too is is helping to educate. I them. want someone else's buyers to know. Right. I want the public so, to know. We're my small, sellers. Yeah, we're Corey, Corey wants everybody. Come right. to me. Well, I, want, I mean, I'm, my seller's willing to do yeah. it. I just need the world to know that so, my seller's willing to do it. You can't put on the MLS photo. Do you have to have all the verbiage that goes along with it? Is that where this <laughs> new thing that I've seen on several uh, listings lately, special financing available? Yeah, but the buyers don't see that part. You know what I'm saying? Like they no, don't, I've been, but they don't know what that means. You but, see what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. need but dummy we, terms. Hey, Mr. Buyer, my seller's willing to buy down your rates so you can afford $300 Your shopping more. payment, Mr. Right. Buyer. But can we attach a flyer that Keith produces that has all the verbiage that you're supposed to have? I well, don't he's gotta think be, so. he's got to be in compliance. So. Yeah. Which, which is fine. The, the, so the mortgage coach that I ran before, Yeah. let me go back to it. It, is, it, it has more detail than this. Yeah. But as long as I have a rate and I have the APR, and then I fine print, and this is a, a screenshot. Your disclaimer at the bottom. I've got is that a public? When I hear what I'm thinking, not even, not even. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, just, that's not. where my so brain is. So see, you need to educate the agents. There's a lot of dummy agents. Exactly. Out there. But what I'm saying is, girl, I'm old. I know that. I have children. I don't. I don't need to hear the other ones. I just want to find a way, and there's got to be a way. Yeah. So almost there's got to be a way. And maybe we follow up and brainstorm. On seeing happen. how we can. Well, what I'm saying is, don't even put anything in the in the agent or in the public comments. Have a flyer that has. You know, but you just said it can't be a public. It's not all the time. The agent can get right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Even with all his disclaimers yes. and all that. 
What if you put it on the back of your trunk and drive down the road? <laughs> 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 what do you wait? Bus stops? Your shopping know. payment, Mr. Buyer. Yeah. Right. You don't care what the sales price is. Right. Well, another that. thing you could do, I guess but, one but thing they you could do, do and, and they do, they, they do care what they do care what the price because that's the stigma that we put out there. Right. Yeah. It is the price and interest rate, and, and we are worst enemies out there mm -hmm. on focusing on interest rate. Yes, I agree. Instead of payment, right? Instead of making bank that time, yeah, and put in the front yard. Yeah, but but leave leave, leave the flyers in the house because they're going to see the house. Oh, but are they? I want them to come to my house. So they know. Well, I know that. I know that's true too. But yeah. for those that see the house, I they go, "Oh, well, look at this." Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, do a flyer in the house, but. It, that's great, but then you're just attracting the buyers that come that's in. That's what there. I mean. I want the, to be able to want a mass. Know. Yeah, to mass. But it sets your house apart from other homes. Like no, that. it does, yeah. but they have to already be there. Yeah. I well, want everybody to know that my seller is willing to I, help. I've got to believe that if there's not a way that, you know, we get with Trek and go back in and say, hey, guys, look. You know, the, the builders are putting on it. and I see Exactly. The, but I see the builders' listings that are listed with I an know. agent. I know. That's public because I can see it that says... Special financing available. Yes, but is that dummy enough for average buyer? You know what I mean? Like, probably is that specific enough. Right. Probably, like, oh, great. Probably Double not. financing. Seller's Seller concession. Dollar sign. Dollar Yeah, dollar, but you know what I'm saying? Like, there's just well, got to be, I don't know. That can't do that either. It, and that's a great point on the seller concession because that's the hard part on the buy downs mm -hmm. and the cost of buy downs. Yeah. Because it's going to vary depending on the type of loan yes, that they yes. do. Oh, yeah. Right. And it's going to, as far as the cost. Yeah. So I've got some tables that are later. And this is just some verbiage that, that I use with, with the buyers. Mm -hmm. So again, I've got all this PowerPoint. I'll send it to you. It's just a good thing that, that, that can help sellers you're going through. So I'm not going to go through that specifically, but it helps promote me too. And from my understanding, it can be in public remarks. Nope. Nothing about financing can be in there. That's probably Oklahoma versus Texas. Probably. Yep. And then, like I said, these were just some ideas that we had, too. Well, you're not going to get caught. Huh? I'm not getting caught. Well, I don't, I don't know. Oh, you get a warning first. I do not like warnings. I don't like warnings. If you make $100,000 and get fined, five. You know. <laughs> That's how the corporation is. That's clearly not rule of law. That is not a bad ROI. I'm going to give you an H. Alex, Alex, stop that recording real quick. <laughs> These two won't do it. No. <laughs> but but let's let's do that as a follow up. Go going Please. going back in and just let me know because y'all are the experts, y'all are the real estate professionals that are out there. Um and, and very, very good at what you do. I'm I'm going out on my CRMs on the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm gonna go over some other stuff besides this here in a minute that's really, really kick started my my business is up forty eight percent this year. Year over year. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And Congratulations. Yeah, and so well, there are a lot of it's thanks to everybody sitting in this room, but there's some things that I've been doing. So, like I said, just kind of going back in on, you know, being the hero instead of the zero out in the market and getting that family and that home that they deserve. So, this is just a, a, a you know, screenshot on buy downs. So, on, on permanent buy downs and temporary buy downs. And so, go back in on this. It'll go straight to my website. I've got a buy down calculator that's on there. So the question I always get from people, what's the cost of the buy down? Mm -hmm. It's gonna depend on the loan amount and what we're, how we're doing it. We're doing two, one, three, one, or one, one. Um, does everybody understand what a three, two, one, a two, one, and a one, one is? Mm -hmm. Give me a down for us. And, yeah. just so, so just real quick, a one, one buy down is, let's say that rates are 7%. So you're buying the rate down for the first year. And what that money does is it goes in, let's say it's a thousand bucks, difference in monthly payment it goes into a separate escrow account, okay? So when the person makes that payment, say the monthly payment, I'm gonna say 1,200, just to be easy, is $100 difference, they pull 100 bucks out, side escrow account, add it to the payment for that first year. So that money's used up after the first year. Same thing on a two-one buy-down. that's like the first two years though, is it the first year or two it's, years? It's during the first year. So it'll be, it'll go back in during the first year, it'll be 1.4, and then it'll, it'll increase during year two. It'll increase to prime then or prime now? It, no, it'll increase to whatever the rate was at the time. So if the rate was okay. at 7% and they did a temporary buy down, their first year rate is at 6% mm -hmm. on a one year. Okay. On a two one buy down, the first year rate's 5%. The second year goes to 6%, and then the third year will go to 7 On a three two one buy down, the first year rate's 4%, then 5%. 
then 6%, and then 7%. And by then, they can refi. Hopefully, but the good part is if they do refinance, that money that's set aside mm -hmm. is their money. Right. So let's say they didn't use all the buy down on the program, they've got 1500 bucks still left in that side account. Mm -hmm. It comes off their payoff. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And these get more expensive as obviously the 321 is the most expensive. Absolutely. As they go down, and you can buy down that, that permanent rate too. So let's say that you bought that permanent rate down from 7% to 6 in that scenario we used before, to, to six and a quarter. Same thing, that the first year rate would be for three and a quarter, four and a quarter, five and a quarter, six and a quarter on a three, two one. That's what a lot of builders are doing. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they went in and, and, and got money. They borrowed money from us up front and they have big commitments on it. So they paid the buy downs up front, $22,000, $24,000. The reason you're seeing these incentives right now, if they don't use that money, Mm -hmm. By the time that elapses, they lose it. Mm -hmm. It's non-refundable. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's a good idea if you're looking to construction to go right now. So, and then that's just on you know the QR codes that's on my website, and then you know pre-qualification coming back in. But that was that was mainly on that part. And the second thing that I wanted to go over and. Alex and I talked a little bit about it. And I know Leslie, you did it, Rhonda, and, and we're gonna try and get a Zoom class together the next month, if not sooner, on list reports. And I don't know if you guys are using list reports or have seen it or not, but all you do is you pair with the lender. It doesn't have to be me, it could be any one lender that's out there. The lender pays the cost for all that technical support that's on the background. And then the benefit we get is a co brands everything. So it puts my stuff out there as, as well. But there's there's some really, really good value there. And then the one thing I would encourage everybody to do is, man, I went back two weeks ago after we talked and called all my clients for the last five years and pulled up all their stuff on the county website and go, hmm, did you file your homestead exemption? Mm -hmm. I was surprised I had 8% of my clients that did not file their homestead exemption. What a hero when you call them up and say, hey, you didn't follow this. It can be retroactive for the last three years. I'll just save you some money. It's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And it's an excuse to call them. And I actually picked up five transactions that are closing this month from that from that because there were people who were getting divorced. Mm -hmm. They were moving. They had forgotten about me. Whatever the case may be, I mean, I've got my CRM. I'm still sending them stuff every month. Life events you didn't know about. Yeah, yeah. it was that personal connection, and it was mm -hmm. amazing. And the second thing that I've done that really has helped me out, and I've got an accountability group that's that's keeping me up. They said, "Hey, you need to add a hundred people to your CRM, your database." I'm like, "Dude, there's no way." That's what I did. I went back through some people I'd taken off from before, add them back on. I got three calls for three people who are moving out of state. So, you know, it sounds bad. I talked to the manager over at Chick-fil-A when I picked everything up today, had his business card. He's gonna go on my CRM as soon as I get back to the office. But yeah, anything that y'all need on buy downs flyer wise, I mean, we can pop them out like that. And like I said, that buy down calculator, if you don't use anything else, no matter who you use, it's a great calculator to go back in. All you need is the rates and what you're buying down. They can get you all the numbers. I think it's all messaging. It's just how do we get the messaging out? Yeah, that's my, I'm just, I've been racking my brain. He and I have discussed it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a massive disconnect. It may just be because I don't, I just don't know. I don't know how to do it. Well, the problem is we're fighting an uphill battle. Right. On the news every night. Well, home prices are up and the interest rate is up also. Nobody right. can afford a home anymore. Right. Well, I hear pretty every good. Night. I was not saying the interest rates are up, so they're, Really but but it's the same thing with everything else. It'll take that market cycle. Yeah. And, and with us being in an election year this year, it was last year, you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to get it out through, you, you know, like I said, Alex is doing a great job on videos out there. Mike's doing a great job. You know, get those videos out there. And it's staying in flow with your people. Absolutely. Every step of the way. And not only the, those people, but the other ones that you're getting ready to work mm -hmm. with. So, I mean, everybody knows the statistic. On average, somebody... Everybody that you know knows four people who are going to buy or sell a house in the next 12 to 24 months. Sounds like mid-year selling. It's exactly right. <laughs> it is. Yeah. 
And I'm so glad y'all went to that class, by the way. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's, I was in here, what, five years ago? <laughs> And send everybody yeah. the book. Yeah. Keith, yeah, Keith gave me the book five years ago. There's there's, there's another book that I'm going to send. He's now reading it. Yeah. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's another I'm book. I'm kind of slow, Keith. It takes a <laughs> long. It's okay. Yeah. I, have y'all read the book Raven Fans? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to get y'all a copy of Raven Fans. I read it again about three months ago. I, I'm going to send, I'll send y'all a copy. That's, uh, it's, it's an excellent, excellent, excellent mm -hmm. book on how to build it. But, yeah. You read the Go Giver? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think oh, you got to read that for What did you say, Jeff? Go Giver. Go Giver. Go Giver. Or Energy Boat. Go Giver. Better. And I think the key takeaway and all this stuff, because I was getting down like everybody else for a little while. Oh, man, what's going on? You know what? We do 99% of the stuff right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a hard time right now. And it's mm -hmm. going to pay off later when we come in and we've got to quit beating ourselves up on everything. And, oh, man, I didn't do this or I didn't do that. It's all right here. People are still buying selling houses. Absolutely. Left and right. How did we get there? Over there's never been a year when no one modern sold a hill. Right. House. Mm -hmm. so, well, you're up 78%. Yeah, about 48%. About 48%. About 48, I'm sorry. Yeah, about 48%. <laughs> when the market's down 26 Yeah, yeah or about, whatever. Off, yeah, on average. Mm -hmm. On average. And it's nothing that I did that was special or incredible or life changing or anything like that. It was. It was you getting, just did it every day. Getting yeah. back and doing the basics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Consistency. Yeah. For the most part, those of us who are doing well, for the most part, did make it easy. Right. So. Right. Too. And yeah. I, I mean, I've had, yeah. I've had down yeah. months. I mean, my December is going to be down probably 32% yeah. over year over year, but that's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It gave me time to kind of go back, reevaluate where I'm at, where I'm going, what I'm going to do. Put, right put that plan together. Exactly. But y'all are great at what you do. Everybody sitting in this room. Is, is, is tops. I mean, I deal with hundreds and hundreds and <laughs> hundreds of real estate agents that, I'm holy sorry. crud. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that that's basically what I had from there. And then, like I said, if, if y'all don't, if y'all don't mind, I'll follow up with the list reports. If you're not on list reports and you want to be, it doesn't cost you anything to do it. Like I said, I, I, I know Alex has played with it a lot. And it's, it's pretty cool when you, it has the QR codes that you can put at the bottom of your houses and it'll come in. It auto populates everything. It task lists for you. It's kind of idiot proof. Uh, no, not completely. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking at it and I really. That's, that's why I want to do that because it took me a little bit to get past the technical part on it. Yeah. Uh, but once I did, it was, it was pretty cool. So like if you send, if I call you up and you've got a listing that's out there mm -hmm. and it's, it's your listing or they go off that QR code that's on, on your sign rider. And then you want to, they want to see every other house that's in that quarter mile radius. And they, the, the client sets that up. Then it'll go back in and it'll, it'll get all the houses and it'll show the listing agent in a bitty print. <laughs> but it's still got all your contact information right up top. So it's just another tool that's out there. And, and like I said, it doesn't cost you anything to do. Can you do a class on that? We're going to do a Zoom class. Okay. I was going to try and bring Jordan in. Um, and Jordan left list reports and, and went over with another company. So I talked to Cameron yesterday, and so we can do a Zoom okay. if we want to, so you don't have to be here at the office, but we can just schedule a Zoom webinar on it. Okay. Well, we'll come to the office. I mean, it's good to get in the office to talk about it, too, afterwards. I, I yeah. enjoy hanging out with everybody, yeah. so, yeah. Well, thanks for coming. This was very helpful, and I think mm -hmm. we just... I think we need to I think on. we need to brain trust and go in, and I'll make some phone calls, too, on, hey, you know, I'll call Trek directly. How do we let people know about this? Yeah. There's got to be a way. Yeah, because it's so much better, and you can you, you can see the numbers now, and a lot of people don't show you the numbers. You know, and if I've got a client that's sitting there and they go, "Man, Keith, I can't afford twenty seven hundred bucks a month, but I can afford twenty four. Yeah. Hey, here's a way we yeah. can get here's a way we can get you there. And we'll benefit everybody. Absolutely. I think it's just it. You know, you go back to it's educating. It's getting them off the fence. Well, I can't afford that. How do you know? It's like talk to my lender. Right. It's free. He's not, you know, not going to pressure you, but he can tell you what you can afford well, and how to afford it. And even with the new construction stuff, if you've yeah. got clients that are out there, my, I would love to do loans all day long, but I also want to be able to educate people as well. And I, I mean, I'll tell them, hey, this is a smoking deal. You know, I tell them up front. <laughs> You know, when they're looking at, you know, what I do, I still put them in my CRM. Yeah, that happened to me this week. Yeah. I can't touch that. Go for it. That's a great deal. Right. And so, I, but, but 
as an agent, you've got them in your CRM. I've got them in mine because I've got an opportunity when these rates go down to, re to refinance. You know the builder's lender's not keeping that building. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's a, it, it's a long-term benefit. And plus, they're going to know four people who are going to buy yeah. or sell. And if you were honest. In the, that's the big thing. In the next that's 12 the months. And that's, that's the big picture that's out there. It may not be a deal today, but who does that person yeah. who does that person know? Yeah. And that's how you build it off your state of flow. Yeah. yeah. Your state of flow, you're top of mind. All the time. And I'm a big fan to send out cards. I know a lot of people aren't, but I am a huge fan of it because my handwriting stinks. But I've been doing the, the, the two gratitude letters or notes every day, no matter what. And I've gotten some phone calls with, with clients who are in tears. I just need to hear this today. That's pretty cool, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Impacting somebody's life. Yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you all for your time. Hey, guys, thanks for coming. Thank you. Breakfast. Well, thank you for watching our presentation. You know, Keith is our go-to guy when it comes to mortgages. And uh, we hope if you need some help with your mortgage uh, business, then you'll contact him. All of his information is here. Again, thank you very much.